Our next question is define torsion. Torsion is nothing but equal and opposite moments applied at both the ends of a structural element or its part about the longitudinal axis is called as torsion. It is also termed as torsional moment or twist or torque. So that is all torsion. The next question is what is compatibility torsion? Give an example. If you see compatibility torsion is the torsion induced in the member due to compatibility of rotations at the joints of interconnected members. The examples are spandrel beam rigidly connected to cross beam. The interconnected bridge guider and grids in horizontal plane. So this is what is meant by compatibility torsion. Torsion included due to the rotations of the joint of interconnected members. Our next question is explain equilibrium torsion. Torsional moment that is developed in one or more elements of a structure to maintain equilibrium is called as your equilibrium torsion. It is also known as determinate torsion or primary torsion. Our next question is define bond. Bond is defined as the grip between concrete and steel. The force that prevents the relative movement between concrete and steel is known as bond. The next question is list out the different types of bond. The different types of bond are as follows. Flexure bond and anchorage bond. So these are the two types of bond that can be provided in order to give a grip between the concrete and the steel. Moving on to our next question, we have what is column? When a member carrying axial load is vertical and having an effective length exceeding three times the least lateral dimension, it is called as column. So the axial load will be vertical and they have effective length exceeding three times the least lateral dimension. Our next question is classify the columns according to the materials. The columns are classified according to the materials as follows. Timber, stone, reinforced cement concrete, pre-stressed concrete. So these are the various types of columns according to the materials. Moving on to our next question we have, what is axially loaded column? If you see, an axially loaded column transmits the compressive force without an explicit design. 
and it is required to carry lateral loads or end moments when the line action of the load passes through from the center of gravity of the column it is called as axially loaded so this is what is meant by axially loaded column Our next question is what is uniaxial bending uniaxial bending is nothing but the moment due to load transferred from one direction of the column to other and it is called as uniaxial bending a column is subjected to eccentric load along one axis only so such a column is said to be uniaxial bending our next question is what is biaxial bending a column that is subjected to an eccentric load along both x and y axis such a column is said to be biaxial bending the moment due to load is transferred from both direction of the column and it is called as biaxial bending our next question is what is braced column when relative transverse displacement between the upper and lower ends of the column is prevented the frame is said to be braced column so the displacement between your upper and lower ends of the column will be prevented what is unbraced column when the relative transverse displacement between the upper and the lower ends of a column is not prevented then the frame is said to be an unbraced column the next question is define slenderness ratio slenderness ratio is the geometrical property of compression member which is related to the ratio of its effective length to its least lateral dimension so that is meant by slenderness ratio your ratio will consist of effective length to its least lateral dimension the next question is list out the different types of footings the different types of footings are as follows isolated footing combined footing rectangular footing trapezoidal footing strap footing wall footing so these are the different types of footings in isolated footing you have flat stepped and sloped footing a next question is define wall footing and also sketch it a footing provided under a wall is used to be continuous along the length of the wall and such footing is said to be as wall footing our next question is under what circumstances is a trapezoidal shape preferred for a two column combined footing 
when the loads are unequal and when there is restriction on sides then the shape of the footing will be trapezoidal b wider and greater on the load side so this is meant by trapezoidal shape is preferred for two column combined foot a next question is what is meant by eccentric loading on a footing and under what circumstances does this occur if you see the load p pressure acting on a footing may act eccentrically with respect to the centroid of the foot base this eccentricity might result from one or more of the following effects the column transmitting a moment m in the direction to the vertical load or the column transmitting a lateral force located above the foundation level in addition to that of your vertical load so these are the cases in which you have eccentric loading on footing thank you so much for joining gtech on reinforced concrete elements hope you would have got an idea of reinforced concrete